Ken James at Micro 430 Guy with you once again. Wherever you are in the world, thank you for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Nice to see you. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button below and also the notification bell beside it to get notified every time I upload a new video. If you get the chance to give me a thumbs up and a like, then I'd really appreciate that as well. Do you ever think about your own health and safety when you're taking photographs? Do you ever consider um, the people who you're taking photographs of, their health and safety? It's something when I was doing um, high volume shoots for schools and cadet forces and um, youth groups that I had to really consider quite strongly. I had risk assessments for everything that I, that I did. But if we're just going out as individual photographers, just taking something, photographs of our hobbies, do we really consider the, the risks then? Do we really consider what dangers we put ourselves into? Now, I was watching a, a video a week or two back and it was quite a horrendous one because it it was of a young guy who was obviously fascinated by trains and a photographer or videographer I wasn't quite sure which one but who stepped on to the line with a train coming towards him to catch one of those really quick sort of shots where you want to be able to get the train come towards you and dive out the way quickly unfortunately this guy didn't get out of the way quickly and um, his um, zest for trying to take the great photograph or the great video cost him his life um, and I started looking up a few other little articles I've, and the amount of photographers who in pursuit of their career have risked themselves far beyond uh, what's necessary whether it's killed them whether it's just hurt them or even just given them a big fright is amazing um, there was one article I saw um, with a, a chap who had to be rescued from caves he'd gone into caves to do photography and the, the water level in these caves were, were quite low at the time and there had been all the time he'd gone there he'd done this several times in the past never really looked into the background of what how these caves ticked how these worked and he'd gone into the cave area with his camera to take photographs inside the caves which were fascinating photographs unfortunately there was a, a change in the weather outside quite a severe downpour when he was inside which he didn't even know had happened and the first thing that he knew was the water level was rising and he was stuck inside the cave and had to be rescued by my cave rescue. Very, very nearly cost him his life. And when he was being interviewed afterwards, the biggest concern he had was he had to leave his camera behind in there and he lost all his shots. Now, if that's the sort of level that you're going to on, um, on your photography, I think there's a bit of a problem there. So when you go out, do you actually have a look at what's around you? Do you look at what you're going to be taking the photographs of. Do you think of what that subject is and how it fits into the environment you go to? There's countless wildlife photographers lost their lives over the years from going into the, into the you know, the, the, the jungles or the desert areas and not taking enough precautions, whether it be from large sort of wild animals or even just sort of insects or, or reptiles, which have cost them their lives or livelihoods, if nothing else. Um, there's parts where you can go into where it's probably not safe to carry a camera um, there are several areas in the in the world on, on almost every country and every continent where there are dangerous areas do you check out the terrain before you go into one of those areas to make sure you're going to be safe do you advertise yourself as being a photographer the amount of times I've been on holiday and I've seen in some quite rough areas of places photographers walking around with the newest Nikons or Canons with the, logo, with the logos emblazoned all over it, casually just being carried around, probably in a case which also has the, the logo emblazoned onto it. And that's almost asking for somebody to come up and mug you. So do you, when you go out into the field, do you actually consider your environment before you go out there, irrespective of what lens you're taking or what camera you've got or what the actual subject is, consider where you're going to, consider what the pitfalls and what the um, danger areas are around there. Now, it's very easy when I go into a studio environment, whether it be a fixed studio or a pop-up studio, to make sure that I've got gaffer tape on the cables on the floor to make sure that they can't be tripped over, to make sure that the cables are put in the decent areas away from where people will walk, to cordon off areas, to make sure that stands are well weighted down, to make sure that all these things happen, to make sure that if you have got um, youngsters, you've got safeguarding policies, all those sort of things. But when you go out into the big bad world, you don't always have those things with you. You don't always have somebody to help you. You don't have somebody looking at, looking at your back. And a lot of it comes down to you. So do you do a risk assessment for that? And that sounds a bit silly when you're going out uh, photographing in the field somewhere that you would do a risk assessment. 
but think about it another way. I've done a lot of work with youth, youth organisations in the past where we've organised expeditions for th in the UK we have a thing called Duke of Edinburgh Award where youngsters are, are, are sent into the field to, to do um, basically look after themselves for 48 hours or more depending on which level um, in the wild countryside and they have to look for themselves fend for themselves feed themselves and also look after their own safety before we ever do that before we ever get teenagers to go out and do those things we make sure that there's full risk assessments done for everything we do and that's just to go for a walk so you know we we really need to be considering what we do as photographers do we do those same risk assessments do we sit down and plot what the uh, what the possible dangers would be it only takes five or ten minutes to have a think about it do you look on a map if you're going somewhere you haven't been before do you have a look on a map do you do a search on the internet do you do a little look to see what that environment is like? If you're going abroad, are there any diseases? We've been very much in the in the idea of communicable diseases recently in the last couple of years. We, we can't have missed that. But we've always had things like uh, malaria as, a, as an issue and yellow fever and things where we've had to take injections in the past on those sort of things. That's part of your risk assessment. If you're just going to, if you're going to be taking a photograph of trains or fast moving vehicles, quite often they're constrained in some way. Don't go past the constraints, even if it's going to make the perfect shot. And if that shot is something you really do necessarily desperately need, go and find out from the people in authority as to the best way that they can facilitate it for you. Because they know the ground that probably, they know what the pitfalls are, they know the danger and, and hazards. And, you know, these are the sort of things that, even if you're going into, double check. I do a lot of photographs of churches, um, a lot of them older buildings, and a lot of the buildings themselves are dangerous. They've been abandoned or they've been um, disused for many years. And it's worth just finding out what the terrain is around and making sure that whatever you do, you're doing it safely. So... Just have a think about what you do for a risk assessment. Don't be the guy who gets knocked over by the train because you want that head-on shot of the train coming towards you at 125 miles an hour. I can guarantee they win. And if you are going into something like a, um, a cave or up, up on a, a height, make sure that you're, that you're safe. Make sure that there are proper precautions there. Make sure that you talk to the people who matter, who know those sort of environments properly before you ever do it. Do your research. Hopefully... You'll not get into those sort of situations, but it is worth thinking about. My name is Brian James. I'm Micro Four Thirds Guy. This has been one of my Micro Four Chats. If you haven't subscribed, there's a little subscribe button down below. It's now grey rather than red, so look out for that. With a little bell beside it to give you notifications of any time I upload a new video in the future. If you've enjoyed this, please consider giving the thumbs up and the like because thumbs up and likes actually gets YouTube to spread my videos to more people so that they can see them. And if you have enjoyed it, thank you very much. Leave a comment if you want to. If you've been in an awkward situation yourself in taking photographs, drop me a comment. Um, or if you've got any sage advice for other readers, for other people who read the comments, again, leave it down below. I'm, I'm not the only one who reads the comments. Lots of other people do. And finally, if there's any use in these videos and you fancy giving me a little bit of support of the channel, there's a PayPal link in the, in the description below. Leave me enough for a coffee and I'd really appreciate it. Lots of people have and I thank you all on that one. So once again, this is Brian James at Micro Four Thirds Guy, leaving you hopefully in, in total safety with the Micro Four Chat. See you next time. Enjoy taking your photographs. Bye bye.